and good morning everybody it is 9 a.m right now we're heading to the first job site well actually i'm hey i'm uh lex is already there i'm just not gonna arrive we have a 2008 mazda 3 hatchback i believe uh it's a full interior cleaning a wash and wax and an engine cleaning uh it's gonna be around 500 in total like somewhere around there because the price range for the interior is between 200 to 2 to 240 so we'll see what the price is once we get there uh 224 the wash and wax and then and then the engine cleaning is 50 dollars. so the only price range based on condition is gonna be the interior cleaning and that's what i want to talk to you today in this video about what's the best type of business model to have is it always going versus to high-end vehicles and paint correction is it can you just do interior cleanings is it is it viable to just focus on washes and maintenance washes that's what we'll cover in this video As you can tell, it's actually not that bad on the inside. And on the exterior, yeah, it's a bit dirty, but with exteriors, it's much simpler to get it to a clean condition because once you like pressure wash it and do the initial wash, I mean, it's basically like easy breezing after that, assuming there's not like heavy contaminants of that you got a clay or anything. But the interior is super simple. We're charging 200 for it. I mean, it really should not take us but an hour-ish to complete that and the wash and wax it's i mean it actually is dirty but again not much is going on with it uh there's some it's like some i don't know what's on the, on the on the front end but that should be taken care of super easy i don't know if you can hear all those like whatever those animals insects are but they're everywhere anyways uh should be a pretty straightforward detail <laughs> Okay, so I didn't record all that much on the interior because there wasn't all that much to show or record. So again, it's now it's 10.30, I think. We started like like around like 9.25, 9.30. So again, I said, and it's gonna take an hour. It took an hour. So we'll we charge the 200 bucks. It's just to be fair, we're probably not. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. So let's talk about the video. What is the better type of detailing business to run? Is it a high-end paint correction type service? Or maybe you're not working on high-end vehicles, but you are doing more high-end work, two-step correction, one-step polish with a ceramic coating of some sort. Um, then we have like the interior only type of business. And that's been more like popular over the last several years, I believe, because like there's, there's a lot more detailers posting on their YouTube channels with those, you know, disaster uh interior cleanings so that could be it but that's also an option then you have just your what most people know of, of the like the you wash 25 cars a day and that's what you do day, day in and day out is there really anything wrong with any of those no not at all it's really going to come down to what you like to do right what you're able to do the capabilities that you're able to do your services that you're offering the goals that you have in mind so is one better than the other no because you can find plenty of detailers or you can find plenty of car washes that just strictly do whether it's mobile or at, a, or at a shop there's plenty of car washes that are doing way, that are making way more money than those that are doing high-end paint correction you can find uh, shops or detailers that are, that are doing high-end paint correction that make more money than the car washes and you can find businesses that do interior cleanings making more than the high-end paint correction so is there really one that's better than the other no there is no definitive answer you're not going to be more profitable or make more money just because you're saying hey i charge a thousand dollars for this paint correction that took me 14 hours 16 hours 18 hours just because you charge more money does not mean you make more you have because does not mean you have more profit or you're making more money like th there's no there's also no correlation between that if you charge more it does not mean you make more money and keep more money in your pocket
I mean, thinking about it like this, how many other businesses are, are, are out there that are running six figures? I mean, I personally know of a yogurt shop that charges 39 cents an ounce for yogurt and they're bringing in around $120,000 a year selling frozen yogurt. So think about just, not, not with the detailing, but other industries, other businesses. Look at the offering, look at their price points, look at how many employees or their overhead, and yet they're able to be profitable. Why? Because it's not about, yeah, if you if you charge $1,000 versus $200, like you just end up making way more money. No, it, it doesn't work like that. Like you have to follow the basic principles like you have to be profitable, you have to have cash flow, you have to hit a certain amount per hour, and you have to look out over your, your overhead to make sure you don't have too many expenses versus the income that you have coming in. So it's those things that you have to look out for. It's not just about strictly saying, man, like this this next two days we have this uh, $2,500 detail, like we're gonna make, you know, that's some good money. And like it can be, like that could be great money if you know what you're doing and you have all your finances in place and you know everything that's entailed with that type of detail. But if you're just there working, and this is what happens a lot. You're a single man shop, you're working out of your garage, you have the vehicle for two and a half days, you're gonna charge $2,000, and you're thinking, man, this is a good payday, like, it's gonna be a good day, and you're working 10, 12, 14 hours a day on that vehicle, you're you're, you're using up, like, whatever products and whatever ceramic coating you use to, 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 for that vehicle, and it's like, it's still good money, but like, because you're not really keeping track of everything that's going on, like, you're like when you swipe the card it's two thousand dollars but like your hourly rate your overall like profit is actually pretty minimal compared to how much you think you were making so like on this vehicle we're charging 500 if we did three of those would we be profitable yeah what if instead of this what if, instead of three five hundred dollar vehicles in one day what if it was one fifteen hundred dollar vehicle in one day would that still be profitable yeah what if instead of that you're doing 10 15 uh However many car washes that equals fifteen hundred dollars. Like anything can work if you understand the the numbers behind it and you understand what you have to do to be efficient in order to be profitable. Like just think about Chick Fil A. Think about Best Buy. How are they able to stay profitable with such a big overhead, such a big, so many employees, and their products can vary between uh, a, a three dollar cookie. I don't know, like a dollar cookie to whatever, whatever like like because they understand the numbers and they understand what they need to do to be profitable and to make sure their cash flow stays consistent and that everything is in a growth trajectory and not like just stagnant but they're just barely making men barely making ends meet like you have to be able to understand the entire process of your business not just saying hey this $2,500 detail oh man like three days like this is a good payout in a high level overview it looks like it oftentimes though a lot of detailers are taking way too much time working 12 14 16 hours a day and yes it's a good check because it's just you you're the only expense as far as an employee like you're paying yourself but like it if you really look at it you're not making all that great money per hour and i say per hour because like you're still the one doing all the work so you have to hit a certain amount of money per hour in order to justify the work that you're doing So take for instance like the uh what's it called the construction industry um whatever uh, I, i'm off the top of my head i'm forgetting but anyways their profit margin is super slim like a four percent profit margin when they're doing these big 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 um construction jobs like uh, apartments or condos or like these big 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 massive projects you know upwards of 10 15 20 50 100 150 200 like in in that range their profit margin if i believe i'm correct is like four percent so they're 
running off of razor thin profit margin so it's not just i charge way more i make way more money that's not how it goes now are there better services that allow for more cushion of profitability and perhaps even error compared to other services i would say so yes like if you do have a two thousand dollar uh ticket item not just like pain correction but let's say like for like this like let's say or for anything like that, that's a bigger overall ticket item you probably have more wiggle room just because there's more money in the pile so to speak so you can kind of allocate like for instance let's say for this one it was 200 on the inside and let's say it took us four hours right two hours over the budget of what we had budgeted for this well if since we have a wash and wax for 220 then we have the potential of okay we took too much time on the interior so we have to recoup that time on the exterior and try to knock it down by at least an hour so if we thought the outside was going to take two hours let's try to knock it out in an hour to kind of recoup some of that lost time on the interior could you do that off of vehicles that you're charging 25 50 75 bucks for a wash it's a lot harder to do that given that there's already not that much that you're charging anyhow but again it all depends on the situation and everything that you're doing around whatever you're working on Okay, so I think it's like about to be 12 o'clock. We got here like at, well we started around like 9.20, 9.25. So it was like a two and a half hour detail. And we're finished the interior cleaning. We, well, we just need the glass and windows. We finished the engine cleaning and now we just need to apply the wax to the paintwork and then we're done. So maybe like under an hour we'll be done here. So yeah, not every car has to take forever. So not bad on this one. All right, it is now 12, 13, just 15 minutes later, and we're basically all done just wiping down the wax from the vehicle. And that's literally it. All the windows, door jams, all that is all cleaned up, wheels touched up, all, it's all done. Just gotta wipe it off, call the customer out, and then head out. What a problem is with many of us detailers that like you're deciding or oh, like I want to focus on paint correction high-end vehicles a big portion of that whole niche of like going for high-end vehicles or doing high-end work it's like for the Instagram cloud like you just want to post these nice vehicles you just want to say you work on these nice vehicles you just want to say this is a 12 hour you know $1,500 paint correction and coding like a lot of it is for the clout it is for the hey I want to post this for the gram so remember like you're starting a business you're running your business to be profitable your bank account doesn't know that it's high-end work your bank account doesn't know that you're doing interior cleanings the only thing your bank account knows is it wants more money in there and if you want more money in there don't let the gram don't let the, the clout chasing kind of cloud your mind in terms of like oh I really want this paint correction I really want this polishing I really want the ceramic coating and then like you know you post it on the gram you talk about it with other detailers you you say you did this you did that but your bank account does not reflect your energy when you're talking to other detailers okay so don't let the gram don't let the clout cloud your judgment in terms of what you want to do and how you want to approach it okay and I'm gonna end the video right here it's actually like four o'clock now uh, the customer ended up paying around five hundred and thirteen dollars again it took like three and a half hours of work it was a sixty eight dollar tip so very good on that part uh, we're, we get we're pretty good at getting tips like pretty frequently like a ten to twenty five dollar tip 
is very common. Uh, when you pass like the $30 mark, that's when we're like, oh, that's pretty nice. So today was 68 bucks. And it's definitely not unusual to hit like $100 or like 80 to $100 a day or per a day in tips, which is also like fantastic. Who, who wouldn't want to make another $100 in tips alone uh, for the day? So that's how it's good. They do tips through Square. They just enter the, you know, either a specific amount or a percentage of the overall uh, price. Uh, so that's always good. I just finished organizing and moving a lot of things around here. So what do you care about that? I just, that's what I did. So I, I, I definitely want to start document. So right now I document the day, but I don't document a lot of like the offside, like the actual, like not actual, but a lot of the behind the scenes, behind the scenes. So I, I, want, I definitely want to start documenting growing the detailing business. I have a lot of updates I haven't given you guys and I need to do that. And I think after that, I definitely want to start like more like on the day to day, day to day stuff. But those usually don't get that many views. So I need your help guys and I need you to watch more of my videos so I can continue to pump out that type of content because if it doesn't get any views, I'm kind of just turning my own wheels. Anyways, I will talk to you on the next one. Download the ultimate guide to start your detailing business down below and I'll see you later.